LoRa devices have a long range and are small and cheap, ideal for experimenting and maybe even more. Today we will build devices that create mesh networks on 70 cm and, through a gateway and the internet or hamnet, can transfer messages to meshes far away. Or to APRS or to email, ideal for clubs or emergencies. Hello wireless enthusiasts! Here is the channel with a strange Swiss distortion in the signal, with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. In this video we will Look at the LoRa modulation and its properties. Decide on the proper boards for this project and print a case for it. Look at mesh networks. Look at the MeshCom project. Build MeshCom nodes and a MeshCom gateway and connect the gateway to a server to transfer messages to other meshes. LoRa is a long-range, low-power protocol developed for IoT sensors. The HAM community recently discovered it because we get cheap boards developed for the 433, 868 and 915 MHz ISM bands. So these boards can be used in the 70 cm band, for example. A few years ago, I bridged 203 km with a 5 cm antenna and 100 mW. And I regularly get messages from LoRa satellites 2000 km away, using a simple ground plane and a $25 board. I leave you a link to my LoRa introduction video. But of course, these long distances only are possible with a line of sight. LoRa gets its range by reducing the throughput and adding redundancy. In its slowest mode, it is slower than a decent Morse operator. Still, it is suitable for text messages. And what about the devices? Such a $5 module contains a fully equipped LoRa transceiver. If you attach an antenna and a microcontroller, you can use them for your own projects. You also get 1 watt modules for less than $10. However, they are only allowed for licensed operators. You also get a wide choice of boards with these modules connected to a microcontroller, a display, a battery, etc. If you buy such a board with an ESP32 chip, you also get 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. For our project, we will use this T-Beam. It is convenient for all sorts of trackers because it not only has a battery and a display, no, it also has a GPS chip. And if you print this cute case, you get a rocket device. If you want to use this antenna protector, you have to remove the plastic from the antenna. Otherwise, your antenna will resonate far away from 433 MHz. By the way, I always measure and test my antennas with a nano VNA when I get them. Then they get a label that I do not mix them with 868 MHz or 2.4 GHz antennas, which look very similar. If you hear LoRa, you often hear it as LoRaWAN, which is a standard for IoT networks. LoRaWAN is based on a hub and spoke topology with sensors and gateways. MeshCom is based on a mesh where each device can receive and transmit messages from other network participants. So it is self-organizing. And because each node can work as a repeater, the reach of a mesh network can be pretty big, particularly if repeaters and gateways enhance it. Repeaters usually are mesh nodes placed at suitable locations. Other nodes prefer them because they can considerably reduce the number of hops. Gateways connect a whole mesh network to the internet or hamnet. They can transmit messages to other gateways far away. Hamnet, by the way, is an independent internet for ham radio operators only. It uses private 2.4 and 5.8 GHz links. I will create a video about it in the future. So we can create a local network consisting of only mesh nodes. Or we can add a repeater on a hilltop may be solar powered, which stays there for a whole season. Or you place it with one of your ordinary 2 meter repeaters. 
close to a 70 cm repeat probably is not a good idea, because the filters of these modules are not made for such uses. However, we operate 70 cm LoRa APRS gateways close to 70 cm repeaters. They do not work when the repeater is on. However, they are not destroyed and work for the rest of the time. There are already a few live gateways in Germany and Austria. And soon mine will be on the roof too. Meshcom is based on the famous Meshtastic project covered on my main channel. Each node consists of an ESP32 with a LoRa module. Usually the nodes are coupled to a smartphone using BLE and an app. iOS and Android are supported. The smartphone app is used to write and display messages and other things. You also can use a PC program called Python CLI for this purpose. You will find a list of other applications provided by the development team. However, you probably will start with a smartphone. This is what I will do in this video. There are a few differences between Meshcom and Meshtastic. Meshcom does not encrypt messages because this is forbidden for ham frequencies. It predefines many settings to make the exchange easier. And it offers a backbone that does the message transfer not only inside the Meshcom project. It already has an APRS and an email gateway. Meshcom is an Austrian project, so most of the documentation currently is in German. But Google Translate is your friend for other languages. Where to begin with? If you are not within reach of an existing Meshcom gateway, you have to start with either two standard Mesh nodes or with a node and a gateway. I start with a gateway because I want to connect to others in the community. Because my gateway is connected to the mains and does not move, I use a simple TTGO LoRa V2 board without battery and GPS. The first installation is clumsy because you must first install Git Bash, Python, Pip and Mestastic. You can check if everything went fine by typing mestastic h Then you must download the ESP home flasher and the bin file for your board. At the making of this video, I needed this bin version for my gateway board because my TTGO board has the stamp T3 version 1.6.1. .1. I place the .exe file of the flasher and the bin file in one directory because we will need it later too. After starting the ESP Home Flasher, we must choose the COM port and the proper firmware and hit Flash ESP. Do not install Meshtastic firmware because the Meshcom binary has some presets. After a while, I get the following message and the display on the gateway board starts to show text. Our gateway is now live but not connected to Wi-Fi or the Meshcom backend. For the configuration, we have to go to the Windows console and enter two very long lines with settings. I usually prepare this string in a text editor and store it for later use. The first line contains the settings for every Meshcom node. Please adapt your call sign and the COM port for your device. I add dash GW to my call sign to distinguish my gateway and a number to all other nodes. And, very important, close the ESP Home Flasher before you try to enter these lines. Otherwise, you will get a bunch of error messages because the COM port is blocked. If successful, you should get a confirmation. Next, you have to prepare the second string. Here, you have to enter the credentials of your Wi-Fi as well as the GPS position of your gateway. The rest has to stay the same. I leave the two strings in the video description, like that it is easier for you. Now your gateway board should boot and connect to the backend. After a while you should see it in the dashboard. So we can go on with the T-Beam tracker board. We flash the appropriate bin file and add only the first string, because we do not need an internet connection for this node. After booting, it should connect to the gateway and start to display messages from other participants in the network. Now it is time to install the smartphone app. For iOS, you first need to install TestFlight. Also here you can go with the documentation of the Meshtastic project. After installing the app, 
you can search or add your MeshCom node via BLE. Six times zero is the default password. After a while, you should see other participants appearing in your contacts and in the notes list. The user interface is different for iOS and Android. On Android, I had to hard press the notes name and left swipe in some situations. On iOS, it was a little more intuitive for me. We also see that the project still is under heavy construction and more for experimenting than for an emergency situation. One example was that I had to downgrade the iOS app to be compatible with the current MeshCom firmware. I also could not transmit direct messages via the MQTT server to other meshes, but I saw my trackers in aprs.fi. The proof that the APRS gateway works and I was able to send messages to all. By the way, if you send a message to all, you can see it in the Activities tab in the backend. This was just an introduction to a promising project. We must thank Kurt, OE1KBC, for his initiative to start the project and create the first backend. Of course, I will watch the dashboard for any DX stations. Maybe your call sign will appear in the next future? And if you do not like the project anymore, you can use the same hardware for other projects, like a LoRa APRS or a receiver to chase weather balloons. All are shown in videos on this channel. That's all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody, and please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.